Lord, we thank you. Open our eyes to behold wondrous things from your wall. Wake up our destiny. Restore us to godliness. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in us. Let his wondrous compassion and beauty be seen in us. Let his presence be the light on our path. Everything that is darkness disappears today. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Once again, you are welcome to our covenant day of restoration service. I am privileged to share God's word with God's people in this second service. As given to me by God and my father, the state pastor. I believe that as you hear me this morning, the same grace answering for him will answer for me in the name of Jesus. You will hear his voice. You will follow the word. It will produce in your lives. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. September cannot go by unforgotten. It is unique. Nine, they say, is the time of life. God has brought us again in this time of life to give us a sure foundation to sprout in glory. You need to understand the times and the season that we are in. Failure to understand you think is business as usual. When the Bible said according to the time of life, it is nine months. And there is no other month that is nine than September. So in this month that is closing up, if you have not found the foundation for your takeoff, you must listen attentively to the service today. Praise the Lord. God's servant, the apostle, said over this commission, said, and I quote, that the next three months, newsmakers will emerge out of this church. I don't know whether you hear me well. The next three months, the things that have been troubling you before, they will come to celebrate you. The one that receives is permitted to go six feet. God's word is two-sided. It can kill. It can make alive. If you say you will not see me, I release you to go. But if you want to live to see God's glory in me, you will celebrate with me. That is someone's testimony in the name of Jesus. I told you that this ninth month is a month of foundation. God's servant said again that godliness is the core virtue that we need to assess all our valuable inheritance in God. You have been so much concerned about the activities of the devil. God said, turn your face. Wear the cloak of godliness. Every one of your inheritance in God will be delivered. They saw the devil say, where are you going? Say, from walking to and fro. You are not the devil. You will stop walking to and fro. You will stop jumping from one church to another, from one native doctor to another, from one fortune teller to another. Sit down this month and lay foundation. This is the last Sunday of the month. My father, the state pastor, is not here, but he sent his prayers and blessings. That everyone we know that the next three months we are stepping into is an awesome month for all winners. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today is our covenant day of restoration. We are coming. When we make sure the foundation is well, there is nothing you are seeking after that you will not find. There is nothing you are seeking after that you will not find. During our pastor's prayer yesterday, we read from one God's word on restoration. 
And I said, this is it for today. Second Kings chapter 8, verse 1 down. A woman, you know the story of the woman. Elisha raised up a son that was dead. And Elisha told the woman to leave because the next seven years there will be famine. The woman left the land and went to sojourn in the land of the Philistines. While in the land of the Philistines, she was keeping record. Many of us are not concerned about our destiny. We are not keeping record. Some series of things has been happening in your family. You are not keeping record. Some series of things has been happening in your father's 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 father. You are not keeping record. Whether in your father's side or your mother's side, you are not keeping record. You carelessly handle the things and the thing come on you again. Say, God forbid. God, forbid. God keeps record. The woman kept record until it was seven years in the land of the Philistines that Elisha told him to go. And when it was seven years, she packed her things and returned. By the time she came back to the land where she left from, the Bible recorded that her land was gone. Her house was gone. Thank God Gehazi was around. The woman went to the king and explained her story. After explaining her story, Gehazi confirmed her story. Praise God. When Gehazi confirmed that story, the restoration began. The king appointed someone. That someone holding your blessings is releasing it and God will be restoring it to new service. The king appointed someone saying, look at this woman. Number one assignment, restore her house, restore her land. Not only that, Every fruit from that land she did as she left, calculate it, restore unto her. Something will turn for someone in this service in the name of Jesus. But the pathway to that restoration is our foundation, which we must come back to. What is the foundation? We have been on a running series every Sunday titled Understanding the Cost and Cure of Ungodliness. Understanding the costs and cure of ungodliness. Of course, as the month winds up, don't forget that the prophetic focus for this month has always remained godliness is profitable unto all things. God says what he means and he means what he says. Godliness can take you down. No matter how time flies, it takes you up. The bodily exercise profited little. But godliness is profitable unto all things. Having promise of the life that now is today. The life we are living now. Don't think Christianity is for eternity alone. It's for now. The life that now is. Dare to be godly. Dare to be godly. And what situation change on their own. Most of the battle we are facing in life is a battle we are fighting we created for ourselves. And we have refused to do, do something about it. But dear to be godly. Ezekiel chapter 18, which is that scripture, we we'll read it again. Ezekiel 18, verse 20. He says, The soul that sinneth, he shall die. Look at verse 4 first. Ezekiel 18, verse 4. The Bible said, Behold, all souls are mine. The devil does not own you. God owns you. The devil has no right over your life. God has. All souls are mine. But for me to make you come on my side, repentance is necessary for God to forgive. He said, as the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. When they mention father, mother is there. Because two of you is one. They've met on son. All the children are there. Praise the Lord. So don't sit down and say they mentioned father, they mentioned son. They did not mention mother, they did not mention daughter. Fathers and son are the problem. No. No. Everybody is inside. You are inside. I am inside. Praise the Lord. So the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. 
He started with all souls are mine. So everybody is inside. All, all, all. Everybody will not die. Is the soul that sin that shall what? Die. Look at yourself. Every day, one leg in church, one leg outside. Define your stand. You can't walk widening your leg all the time. Something will happen to you someday. Stand! The Bible says, I'm having done all. Stand! Stand! For God. Then let's look at our verse 18 right now. 18 verse 20. He says, the soul that sinneth, it shall what? Die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked turn from his sins, that he had committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgression that he had committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him, in his righteousness that he had done, he shall leave. God said, Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, said the Lord, God, and not that he should return from his ways and leave. But when the righteous turned away from his righteousness and committed iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he leave? All his righteousness that he had done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he had trespassed, and in his sin, that he has sinned, in them shall he die. That is why this topic is heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. It is the front of the battlefield that we are into. Praise the Lord. If your Christianity should be worth something and of value, it is not a free thing. Value your Christianity. It is not free. Nothing of value is free. To be godly, there is a cost. A songwriter says, I am willing to go all the way. Great is the price I must pay. What glory most charming must be surrendered to Jesus. I am willing to go all the way. To follow God is at a cost. Godliness is at a cost. It is not a two-fold race. It's an individual race. Are you willing to run this race? Apostle Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. The whole of this Sunday, this topic is a time to fight. Fight for your soul. Fight for your life. Righteousness is not just what we believe or declare. It's what we do. It's in the act. It's what you do. If you are righteous, you are righteous in your heart. But what we do, we tell me. Your conscience is telling you. Your, 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 your act is telling others. Praise the Lord. Of course, this is my left hand. This is my right hand. It's very clear. Very distinctive. A pastor was preaching in the first service. He said, when you want to commit that act, just call your, your partner and say, let us pray. And then maybe in the in the vein of religiosity, you now said in Jesus' name. When you have locked yourself with opposites in a room, and then you decide to turn it to a prayer meeting, there will be commotion in the atmosphere. The desire will die. There will be rumble in the air. One annoyance will come from anywhere. Praise the Lord. It is very, very clear. First John 3, 7. He said, my little children, nobody should deceive you. If a man is righteous, 
He is what? Righteous. Even as God himself is righteous. If it is impossible, God will not put it there. It is possible. The devil has contested it because that is why he's afflicting Christians. You compromise your faith. And Psalms 11 verse 3 he said, if we break the edge, the serpent will bite. He said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Compromises everywhere gives the devil an opportunity to strike. The edge that has been broken in our lives opens it up for the devil to strike. But today, as we battle for godliness, every trace of the devil that has been militating against your life, your family, your children, your work, every affairs of yours, sees this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Will the devil attack? Yes. He attack our mother. Mommy Ojedepo. She was almost gone. But apart from the prayers of everyone, she also prayed took scriptures, took books, took everything. In warfare, it took days, but he came out. She came out strong and heavier than before. Would the devil attack? Yes. He attacked Joseph. Sold him into, put on a dungeon. Sold to slavery. Went to prison. Came out. Went back again. But because he was standing with God, God said it's enough. From the prison to the kingship. Your generation is waiting for you. The Bible said the endless expectation of the creation grew it for the manifestation for the manifestation of the sons of God. Of the daughters of God. Please. My mothers and sisters. When you see sons you are inside. Oh, I told you before. Your world is waiting for your manifestation. Enough is enough for the devil. Why must we exercise ourselves unto godliness? Why? 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 For us to exercise ourselves unto godliness, we must try to understand and examine some of the costs of ungodliness. If you know what ungodliness has done, you will jettison it and make up your mind to pursue godliness. Praise the Lord. Number one, ungodliness blocks your access to supernatural breakthrough. How can you be alive? You are told that something that is stopping your shining, your destiny, your glory is ungodliness. You don't need to go far. You sit down and say, you, now me and you today. He said that you go or something will happen, but I will not go. Hello? You settle down to face the root of ungodliness. Everything blocking your access that is ungodly, rising from within me, from within you. Lord, let the taste dry up in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We have been told in this ministry that everyone born again, that the supernatural is your natural habitat. True of us. That is where you reside. That means things will begin to occur for you in supernatural dimensions. Beyond human explanation. Unexplainable. Undeniable. Proofs everywhere. Things will begin to happen to you in supernatural order. Wake up. Enter your supernatural habitat. supernatural breakthrough God desires for you must happen for you. No devil will block it. When light comes, according to Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3,
you will arise and shine. Understand this lie that something blocking your testimony is ungodliness. He said, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to the light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Why will you keep on in that ungodly act for this glory to be blocked from you? The supernatural is the life that God has desired for you. God said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. It is the thought of peace, is good, and not of evil. I am ready to give you a future and a hope. God can give you future with terminal diseases. God can give you future and take it from you. That is what somebody sang about the devil. When he's giving you, he's going to take more from you. You know the story. Many God has delivered from courts. When God takes you up, you remain up. Let men get God together. God keeps you up. God needs you to go up. But you must know that the person blocking you from going up is the devil. Afflicting you without taste from godliness. Why will you sacrifice your supernatural destiny on the platter of a porridge like Esau? Somebody wake up in the name of Jesus. He blocks your access on godliness to supernatural breakthrough. There is nobody that can hide himself that God will not see him. That is why you need to understand the activities of the devil in your life and in your family. Christianity is not for fun. Let me go to church. You go to church, you go back. You go to church, you go back. No. It is life itself. It will impact your life. That is why at times when the people come front, we tell them, just keep coming. Hear the word. Do the word. Three months. If something does not change, we permit you to change your church. Because it will impact your life. Praise the Lord. Number two. Ungodliness destroys destiny. I was annoyed when I saw this. Know what your destiny is? What God has proposed you to become. What God has made you to become. Samson is a vivid example. He followed the path of ungodliness and his destiny was cut short. Hello. Hello. Which part of ungodliness are you following? Money answered all things. Money is the root of all evil. No, the love of money. Have you loved money? You can do anything for money. You can kill. You can steal. Anything is doable. It's not me who said it. The Bible said something about it. It results to untimely death too. We will see it soon. Your destiny is at the mercy of godliness. But the devil is introducing godliness to destroy the choice destiny that God has made for you. Daniel showed forth. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 30 to 33. A man in a strange land. In Babylon. The king's snake and said, it's not this great Babylon that I built. That was Nebuchadnezzar's story. Praise God. But Daniel in a strange land stood. And when Daniel stood for God, God raised him up in a strange land. Location notwithstanding, God showed up. Praise God. And his destiny was preserved. But a king in the land called Nebuchadnezzar, a king, 
He have everything and pride and pomposity came in. I am now the God. There is no other God. God's word is for the big, the middle, the mighty, the small, for everybody. Nebuchadnezzar was not an ordinary man. He was a king, a rich man, wealthy, everything at his beck and call. But he forgot God. Check the life you are living. The friends you love to parley with as a big man. When you sit down, one bottle of 505 Godons. You decorate the table with a sign of a big man. Dry gin and hot. After decorating the table with the sign of the big man, according to the world, different kinds of uh, wines, red wines, heavily intoxicated. And then you meet again in a hotel, well decorated. You get contractors to bring those guests to you. It's a sign of a big man. The money has come. Who is that God? I have the women, I have the money, I have the cars. But God said again, Mene, Mene, take care of us. If you can interpret dry gin, you cannot interpret that one. They wrote a language for them that they could not understand. That is why, brethren, when you speak in tongues, the devil does not understand you anymore. And when judgment came, God said, no, this one, I won't kill you, but leave my stage first. From a big man to a cow eating grass in the bush. What do you have that God didn't give you? Seek to be godly. Don't destroy your destiny. Don't destroy the destiny of your family. If this, 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 this is not a service of you will prosper here, you will prosper here. Something needs to wake up in your life. Adjust your life. Adjust internally. It's a safe decision. And God will begin to preserve in the name of Jesus. The story of Herod was also told us in Acts chapter 12, verse 21 to 24. You know it fully well. He dropped down his own ended and worms started eating him. These are big men. They are not ordinary people. They were kings. That will not be our story in the name of Jesus. God does not tempt anybody. Every man is drawn away when he lost after such things. Temptation must come. It comes to everybody. Everybody. But what you do to the temptation matters. Praise the Lord. In the world, we are told that the bird can even fly over your head and maybe perish. But it is when you allow it that the bird will now come and start building nests on your head. Praise the Lord. Your destiny will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Ungodliness, number four, engenders untimely death. Ungodliness it causes you to die before your time. But in this church, longevity of life will answer for everyone in the name of Jesus. But you must step out from that act of ungodliness today. I spoke to you earlier about money. If you read Jeremiah 17, verse 10 to 11, especially in verse 11 of it, the Bible said, as a partridge seated on eggs and has said them not, so he that gets that riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his end shall be a fool. Nobody will cut your life in the midst of your days. 
That is not in God's plan for your life. Retrace yourself and be godly. We have come to church. Church should service us. Church should wake up something in our spirit. Church should make us be better person. Church should make us be better Christians. I need you to know that you must understand who you are. The Bible said, you are of the war, but you are not of the war. The Bible said, you are a choosing generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. You are different. Don't live like the war. It's either you are black or you are white. It's either you are a Christian or you are not. There's no middle ground. Allow the beauty of Jesus to be seen in your life. It engenders untimely death. That is why Ezekiel, where we read, said, The soul that sinned is shall what? Die. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Number five. It blocks eternity with Christ. Blocks access to eternity with Christ. It blocks access to eternity with Christ. You cannot take ungodliness and put in godliness. It's not possible. So when you live a life of ungodliness, you have defined your stake. You have defined the person you are following. Even your mouth say, I am a Christian. Your life and spirit said, I belong to the devil. Praise the Lord. Your eternity is critical. It must be in view. Live with, as a man on a mission. When I was growing up in the Christian faith, there's a book I don't, I don't play with. It's in a book. It's in a magazine. I got two of them there. By Richard Warm Brown. Pilgrim's Progress. Every child of God seated here today must understand that you are a pilgrim. You are on a journey. Second Corinthians 5, 17 to 20 said you are an ambassador for Christ. You will go home someday. When we go for home, home going and workings and all that, we remember such words. But it is good that as we are alive to hear it, that if it's in this life we have hope, we have all men most miserable. We are on a journey. We are pilgrims. There is a home somewhere. Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. The place is prepared. There is eternity. In our youth age, when we gather together in our orthodox fashion, we will sing a song. Do you know there is another fellowship in heaven? I know. There is another fellowship in heaven. There is a rest somewhere. The Bible said they that sell such sin desire a rest. Christianity should impart your life here and prepare you for eternity. Many youth have forgotten about eternity. Many youth are concerned about the dictates of the flesh. Someone wake up. There is more to life than you can see. Don't allow that eye to block your access to eternity. It will be too dear. Please wake up. Ungodliness is a disease. It is a blocker of access. All through this month you have had many blocks. If you take note at all, refresh them. If not, get the CDs. Understand what ungodliness has done to destinies. And may God help us to wake up in the name of Jesus. Because of these dangers, 
understanding the cause of ungodliness, then we must arise and fight for godliness. Praise the Lord. We must deal with it and we must fight it out. That is why we want to look at how to deal with the forces of ungodliness. We must deal with it. Hebrews chapter 12. You read from verse 1 through to verse 4. The Bible told us in that same place, we have foreseen also we are compassed with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and to see which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We started. If we must deal with it, we must lay aside. While we are laying aside, he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. You will be alive in the name of Jesus. Verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your mind. Verse 4. Now hear this. He said, you have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, against that temptation. You have not resisted. You have not resisted. You are carried away. You surrender too quick. Proverbs said, if you fail in the days of adversity, your strength is small. But you can build from that small strength today. You have not resisted. Unto blow. You have not taken your life with many. Take your life. Take your life. Take your destiny. Fight for your family. They are waiting for you. I don't know where you are, but there's always a place called there. There's a higher place you are sent to. But you must take your destiny desperately, wholeheartedly, committedly, forcefully. Pay the price. How do we deal with it? You must resist unto blood. If it demands that. Sarkis know there was a problem in his own destiny. But he said he must see Jesus. The shortest man in the whole world. People were coming, he won't see Jesus. For him, even if there was no tree, he will plant one tree there. And he will climb the tree so that he can see Jesus. He did something. What are you doing? What are you doing? The world is almost taking you because of the pressures of life. Start with God. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Your morning of joy is about to be born. The, these three months that is coming as God's servant have declared, you will make news. But you must fight. You must fight. You must fight. The question is, are we ready to fight? To deal with the forces, number one, we must engage in the purging and purifying of ourselves. You must engage to purge and purify yourself. It is needful. It is what you must engage in. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 to 21. No man will engage for you. You must engage. I don't go with you wherever you go to. You don't go with me wherever I go to. That is what must be, must be personal. Many people went with coronavirus. They refused to return to church. Many people because of the lockdown. They attend church as if they are going to play. They want to watch on video. No. The impact I'm having now. I won't have it on the screen. You must make up your mind. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Nevertheless the foundation of God's standard shall have in the seal. The Lord know it. The Lord know it. Them that are his. If the Lord know you, the devil also knows. He know 
house that you are come not near. Let everyone that name the name of God do what? Depart from iniquity. You know what iniquity is? The sin that I am doing that my wife does not know. That secret sin. For the youth, when your parents are not around, what do you do in your room? The secret sin that you are doing, your father does not know. Your mother does not know. But you are engaged in it. The Bible says what? Depart. You don't know that you are not getting your destiny. In our time, we know that peer group and socialization is so strong on our youth. No matter what the family does, the one they watch on television and the one they see on telly and everywhere drags them the more. Tell me. I know fashion come, fashion go. Who taught everybody how to play Bob Marley and Dada? It's the raining hair. We easily give it. The disciples were first called Christians in, in Antioch. First, they saw them. If I see you and your tata jeans, and I see you and Dada, I can't call you Christian now. I can't call you. If I see you on low ways, somebody said in 20 something, the low ways is only the bet that will remain. The trouser will be under. Show me your boxers. And for those who cannot buy boxers, they will show pants. And if you cannot buy pants, what remains? Madness. 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 Why would you allow ungodliness to creep in subtly? Look, back, back, backsliding is not just one day. Not one day. It has started. Small, 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 small. I don't drink, but I take one can of Henneke. One can. And the wall is evolving. It's evolving. When you go to the bar, they say, what will you take? Say, ah, I need the palm wine. No, it's already bottled. I need palm wine. Give me the one that is. I don't drink, but I just take palm wine. How did they ferment it? How did they preserve it? Even ordinary palm wine, you leave it safe. <clears throat> you go go away this side. It will catch you. Ask me how. No, not beside the drink, but for village, my uncle, they give me before. It's only fresh when it's coming from the tree, but when it land, it has stay. Where you drink and you go shack. Let us wake up and face reality in life. Call a spade a spade and not a digging material. Engage in the purging and purging of ourselves. Back to First Timothy chapter two. It's a very key word for everyone. First Timothy two nineteen. Praise the Lord. Verse 20. Praise the Lord. He said, but in a great house, someone said, I am born great. There are not only verses of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, some to dishonor. I am born for honor. If a man, please, if a man, a woman, a boy, a girl. You are all inside. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and met for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work, to every good destiny, to every good life, to every elevation. But you must purge yourself. Make up your mind today. Make up your mind today. God is righteous, we must be righteous. Engage in the purging and purifying of yourself. 1 John 3 and verse 3. Verse 2 to 3. 1 John chapter 3. The psalmist cried and said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. 
Try me and know my thought. If there's any wicked way in me, lead me in your way everlasting. But here we are told that every man that had this hope in him purified himself. Verse 2. Verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. I don't say to appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Praise the Lord. God will help us in the name of Jesus. How do we deal with the forces of ungodliness? Number two, we must strive to cast off every unwanted habit by engaging the name of Jesus in warfare. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous one to it, I say. It is not just to ask God for things. You pray to rescue your destiny. Engage it in a warfare. If you are baptized, that is why we say every child of God must be baptized with evidence of speaking in tongues. When the thing comes like this, you switch to the other language. You can be mena mena take off and say, the devil can't enter his church. You switch over. Grace and strength will come in and you will walk out unscattered. You must put off, you must cast off when it comes to destiny battle. When it comes to ungodliness and godliness, there is a things you must cast off. There are things you must put off. That is why they say it's not what we declare, it's what we do. Looking to be a mirror. The Bible said the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching the inward part of the belly. Search the inward part. There are things to cast off. There are things to put off. As we do that, God's nature in us will begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. We must strive to cast off every unwanted habit by engaging the name of Jesus. Philippians. Let's see Romans 13 and verse 12 and Philippians 2 verse 11. Romans 13 and verse 12. The night is fast spent, the days are time. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Every work of darkness, by reason of the fact that you are present in church, they are cast off today in the name of Jesus. There are things to put off. Colossians 3 and verse 8. We are casting off, we are putting off. But now ye also put off all these things. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Your destiny is more precious to hold this rubbish inside. Unforgiving spirit. Anger everywhere. What does it add to you? Put them off. Some to cast off. Some to put off. And your destiny will be released in the name of Jesus. And then number three, we must strive to mortify the deed of the flesh to the spirit. I checked the meaning of the mortify. It says to deaden, deaden. You know when some people in the past, the medical have changed. When you want to go into some kind of uh, theater and all that, they give you one injection. You don't know what happens to your body. The body is dead. The body is dead. Apostle Paul said, it's no longer I that live it. Be dead to ungodliness and be alive in Christ. Be dead to ungodly acts and be alive in Christ. Mortify the deed of the flesh. It is you that will do it. Dead in your body. Be alive in Christ. It is you that will do it. The devil has been on a hunt. Giving you one little year, one little there. But make up your mind today to mortify everything that is fighting against your destiny. Engage the weapon in battle. You stop watching them. Because whatever you watch will remain. As you pray for things, take that strength to pray for your spirit. And things will change in the name of Jesus. Somebody somewhere just lift up your hands right now. Lord, I receive grace to engage in this battle. 
I receive grace to conquer ungodliness. I receive grace for full dedication. I receive grace for supernatural turnaround. Father, thank you for a change in my life, in my destiny, in my family. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Just before we go into the ministration of our team today, it is pertinent. Make up your mind. If you are not born again, you need to be born again. Today, as given to us, must answer. Salvation is a primary object. As today has been tagged, our covenant day of restoration service. I told you about that woman in the beginning. It is not only the land and the house that was restored. Every fruit that has grown on that land and people have tested it, the king said, what? Restore. God has a good mind for your destiny. But you must allow him. You need to establish, number one, that your restoration is the will of God. According to Zephaniah 3, 17 to 20, and John chapter 10, verse 10. He said, the devil is pursuing you to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you will have life and have it what? More abundantly. By that word, as you are restored today, everything affecting your physical body drops down in the name of Jesus. By this word of restoration, your internal system is renewed in the name of Jesus. According to the scriptures again, the Holy Spirit came to restore double for our shame. Joel 2, 23 to 25. He said, for your shame, especially verse 25, he said, you shall have what? Double. Someone is receiving the double in this service in the name of Jesus. For us to explain the dictates of restoration, God's servant said, anything you have lost in your family, the years that has been unfruitful, the glory, the hurt that has been bastardized, the honor that they have taken from you, God is restoring it in the name of Jesus. And he's also restoring your blessing because he takes blessing to terminate every cause. You are coming out in the name of Jesus. What must I do to secure my restoration? You must return. That woman returned to the land. Return back to God. Return back to God. And God takes off from there in the name of Jesus. What you must do to secure and keep your restoration? Number one is that you must be born again. You must be born again. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Number two, you must receive and believe the word for your restoration. A, B, C. Accept it, believe it, confess it, speak it out. God has given you a mouth and a wisdom. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. When you open your mouth, you speak your destiny because you believe it from the word of God. And it shall happen for you in the name of Jesus. John. I've read John chapter 10 verse 10. John chapter 1 verse 12. Praise the Lord. I need you to write down Job 14, 7 to 9. The Bible says there is hope for a tree. Stop giving up on yourself. You are a bundle of blessing. You are a peculiar person. You are a royal priesthood. Don't give up on yourself. There is hope. There is hope. Take steps. Number three, we must be committed to serving God and the interests of his kingdom. If you not serve God, who you go serve? You have been sleeping at home. Covenant or prayer, you don't come to pray. Wake up. Wake up. This is accounting. Seek to be involved in the covenant of prayer. Right here in church and in all our fellowship centers, we are praying everywhere now. Coronavirus is gone. Wake up and return. 6.20 people are praying. 
Every day, people are going for outreach. 6.40 a.m. in your houses, they are there. Where are they? Having a meeting with the devil? Mortgaging your destiny? Wake up. Be committed to serving God and the interest of his kingdom. And then number four, we must be committed to praying for the well-being of others. That's the secret of Job. When you come, forget about yourself. A giver never lack who said it. Lift up the bodies of the church to God. Pray for, if, if you have a soul, pray for them. And the Bible said in Job 42, verse 10 to 12, when Job prayed for his friends, his captivity was turned around. The testimony can be repeated if you can do that. And of course, the apostle sent over this commission has been sent for the liberation of every one of us. That is why we must believe that God, that God sent prophets are agents of restoration. Hosea 12 and verse 13. Wherever he is, his heart is everywhere where his children are. He's the man sent of God. You can see it physically. You don't need to be told. If you have said this is your time of restoration, then so shall it be. Just there to believe. And it shall happen for you in the name of Jesus. Jesus said in John 10 and verse 10, The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I don't know what you have identified as stolen by the enemy. Because Jesus has not changed, it shall be restored right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said in Joel chapter 2. From verse 23 to 26. Be glad ye children of Zion. And rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. The fast shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. Say with me, do it now, Lord. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, the great army which I sent among you. Ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And then you will praise the name of the Lord your God. That has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Yeah. Every form of shame and reproach will disappear from your life right now. Yeah. Rise up to your feet and say, Lord, do what you alone can do. You said, I will restore. Whatever the enemy has done to bring shame and reproach to my life, Lord, undo it right now. Is it your health that he has stolen? He said, I will restore health unto you and heal you of your wounds. Is it your job? Has he stolen from your business in one way or the other? Everything the enemy has eaten, he said, I will restore. Lord, restore. Lord, restore. Lord, restore. The devil is a thief. By the power of God, is under arrest. He must restore double to you. For every shame he has caused you, God said he will give you double. Call for your double restoration. Call for your double restoration. Call for your double restoration. In the name 
of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands. Father, I stand on the authority of your word. I stand under the unction behind this commission, the unction of liberation. And I decree and declare total restoration of everything that has been lost to the enemy. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. For everyone who lost his or her health to the devil, your health is restored now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you lost to the enemy in your business, I command that business is fully restored. Whatever loss you suffered, especially during the lockdown, I decree double profit restoration is your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. For every job that was lost, receive double restoration. Better job opportunities begin to knock on your door. The jobs you have been looking for will begin to look for you. In the precious name of Jesus. I decree and declare for every marriage the enemy has attacked in one way or the other, it is fully restored. Your marital destiny is restored. I command that runaway husband, that runaway wife to begin to run back to you in the name of Jesus. Have you lost a child? I command. That womb will begin to receive double right now. No more miscarriage in the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. I see God visiting you like he visited Sarah. And everyone that has laughed at you very soon they will begin to laugh with you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Go in peace. The presence of God goes with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. This encounter will keep speaking the remaining days of your life. That affliction shall never rise up the second time. In the name of Jesus. All through this week, no evil report for anyone. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Let's share his goodness. Surely, God's goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of our God forever and ever. Amen. Peace. It's my year of breaking limits. Then what eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations. Amen and amen.